In this video, I'll be sharing some cool things about Blender that you may not have known about. And if you have some other cool things about Blender that I don't share in this video, definitely let us all know in the comments. So this is my stylized penguin tutorial that I created a little while back. And so if you're modeling some sort of character or prop and you want to be able to quickly see it from different angles, you can press Control Alt Q. So Control Alt Q is going to split the windows here. And so we're going to have a front view, we're going to have a top view and a side view, and then we can also use this view to look around. And then I can like select some of the vertices and I can move it around here and I can look at it from the different angles. And then when I'm done, I can just press Control Alt Q again to go back to the default window. Now here's a low poly nature forest that I created and let's say that I want to kind of walk around the scene as if it were a video game and kind of explore the landscape. Well, what you can do is you can press shift tilde and shift tilde is going to turn you into the fly mode. So then you can use the WASD keys. So W S A D and you can move around just like a video game. And then you can move your mouse to kind of point around. And then if you want to go faster, you can scroll your mouse wheel to go faster and you can scroll your mouse wheel back. If you want to go slower, then you can also hit the space bar when you're pointed at some sort of object and that's going to quickly jump you over to that object. And then the other really cool thing about this is that you can hit the tab key and the tab key is going to actually turn on gravity. So now you can see I can walk over the objects and then you can press the V key if you want to jump. So you can see I can like try to jump up onto this tree here and now I'm on the top of the tree. So if you've created a, a 3D environment in Blender, you can use this very basic walk and fly navigation to explore your 3D scene. Now let's say you're modeling an object and you want to scale the object up on the X axis and also the Y axis. Well, what you can do instead of scaling it up on each one individually is you can hit S to scale and then you can hit shift Z. So shift Z will exclude the Z axis or you can hit shift Y that will exclude the Y axis or shift X. It will exclude the X axis. Now the same thing works for rotating. So you can rotate it and you can hit shift Z, you can hit shift Y or you can hit shift X. And this can be especially useful when you are at adding models into a scene. So here's my low poly isometric kitchen tutorial. If I just select like this stool here, instead of like moving it on the X, moving it on the Y, I can just press G to grab, shift Z, and then I can just bring it along here and I can just move it along the ground. And the same thing works for these other objects. So like the cups here, and now I can just move them here along the countertop and I don't need to worry about them moving up and down on the Z axis. Now the next cool feature is that you can do math within any number values in Blender. So this is my fuzzy sphere tutorial. And let's say that I want to have exactly half the amount of particles. What I can do here instead of trying to figure this out on a calculator is I can just click on this number here and then I can hit forward slash two and then hit enter. And that's going to divide that number by two. So you can now see there's just about 4,000 instead of 8,000. So there's just half as many of the particles. I can also times this number. So let's say I want like three times the amount of particles. So to times it, I can hit the star or the asterisk and then I can hit three and then enter. And then that's going to times it by three. I can also use the plus and minus. So let's just say I want to add like 500 particles here. So I'll just click on the number. I'll just click plus and then I can type in like 500 or however many I want. Hit enter and just going to add 500 particles. Or let's say I just want to minus 100. So I can just type minus, type 100, enter and it's just going to minus that amount. Now the next cool trick is that you can actually mirror your object without using the mirror modifier. So if you have an object which is already mirrored, you don't actually need the mirror modifier. If I just go into edit mode, you can see the object is perfectly symmetrical. And so in edit mode, you can see there's actually this symmetry setting right here. So I'll just turn on the X symmetry. And now if I just like select the hand here, I can move the hand. And because the object is already symmetrical, you can see that the other hand is going to move along. And if for some reason the symmetry isn't working, even if the object is symmetrical, you can select everything, you can click on mesh, and then you can click on snap to symmetry. So here I have a Blender file with some random different objects, and these objects have been broken up into different collections. So we have the monkeys collection, the cube collection, and the cone collection. Well, if I just want to work on one collection at a time and quickly switch between them, I can hit the one, two, and three on the top of my keyboard, and you can see that that's just going to preview the first collection, the second collection, and the third collection. So this is super useful if maybe you're working on a big project, and you just want to quickly switch between like different layers of objects, you can just click on those top buttons there and that's just going to preview one collection at a time. You can also hold down the shift key and let's say I want to just preview the monkeys and cones but not the cubes. I can just press shift one and now we're just previewing the monkeys and cubes. Now here's my fall pumpkin artwork that I created recently and if I just go down into the material preview you can see it is showing me the materials but the lighting looks a lot different from the rendered view. 
And that is because the material mode kind of uses a different HDRI lighting. If I click right here on this drop down, you can see there's some different HDRIs, so I can change the HDRI and that's gonna change the look of the lighting. But maybe I want the material preview to use the same HDRI lighting and use the same world lights. Well, if I wanna do that, then I can click up here on the drop down and I can click on scene world. And now it's just gonna use the actual world which is in the scene and I can also choose scene lights. And now it's actually gonna use the lights which we have in the 3D scene. Now, let's say you're working on a project, maybe you're doing some modeling or some materials, but you haven't set up the lighting yet and you don't wanna to have to add an HDRI, you just want some quick lighting to preview the materials. Well, what you can do in the rendered view is you can click on this drop down, and you can turn off the scene lights and scene world. And you can see Blender actually has some pre-built in HDRIs, so you can just quickly change these HDRIs, and then you can also change some other settings, like maybe turn up the strength here, and you can also change the rotation of the HDRI. Now, one thing to be aware of is that these HDRIs that are built in a blender won't actually show up in the final render. So when you render this, you are going to have to use some sort of HDRI because the ones which are built in a blender won't show up in the render. They're just used here for the preview. Now, when you're working with the shader nodes in Blender, it's very common to mix different textures together with a mix color or mix multiple shaders together with a mix shader. So if you have the node wrangler enabled, then instead of adding a mix shader and plugging both of the shaders up, you can just hold down the shift key and select both of them. And then you can press control zero and that's going to add a mix shader. The same thing works for if you have two different textures they want to mix together. So just hold down the shift key and select the two nodes and press control zero and that's just going to add this mix color and it'll quickly mix them together. Now let's say you're working on a project, maybe you're working on a procedural material or something and you want to quickly take a screenshot so you can upload it online or just show someone a screenshot of what you're working on. Well you could use the print screen settings with your operating system but if you want to just screenshot a certain window then you'd have to throw the screenshot into some sort of 2D image editor and you'd have to like crop out your taskbar. Well, you can actually just create a screenshot using Blender. So what you can do is click on window and then you can click on save screenshot or you can choose save screenshot editor. So I'll choose this one here and then I can just click on the editor. Then I can just save my image. I can just save it as like node setup. And then in my downloads folder, I can just open up the node setup and you can see it's just taken a screenshot of that editor. So that's much faster than taking a screenshot and then having to like crop the image and then save the image again. Now, if you're working on a project that needs some sort of reference images and you wanna be able to see the reference images right up next to your model, you can just click and drag and drop in an image directly in the Blender and it's gonna automatically add it in as an image here. And so you can move the image, you can rotate it around. So if I go to side view, you can now see we have a reference image and I'll just align it up to this armature. And you can also do the same thing with videos. So I can just drag and drop a video into Blender and it's going to actually add the video video here as an image. And then if I just play this, you can see it's actually playing the video here in the viewport. And this could be really useful for animations. So if you have some sort of animation reference, you could just drop this in right next to your character and you could use it as reference as you're animating. Now here's the project files for my hot dog tutorial. And so let's say I wanna duplicate this bun and create a bun on the other side. And so maybe I wanna mirror the object. Well, I can duplicate the object. And then if I go into edit mode, I can press control M to mirror it. And then I can choose between Z, X and Y, but in this case I want to choose X, so I'll hit X and then enter, and you can see it's just mirrored that object. And then you might need to press Shift N to recalculate the normals. That can be very useful when you're 3D modeling. If you want to mirror a part of the mesh, just select the mesh, hit Control M, and then Z, X, or Y. I'll hit X and then enter, and it's going to mirror it over. Now here's the product files for my Geometry Node Christmas lights, and I can use this customizable Geometry Node setup to customize the look of the lights. Well, let's say that I want to maybe select the rafters here to edit these rafters in the scene. Well, if I select the rafters, then the Geometry Node modifier setup disappears. So what you can do with any window in Blender is you can click on this little pin icon. So if I click on the pin icon, now this is pinned here, the geometry nodes is pinned. So even if I select a different object which doesn't have the geometry node setup, you can see the Christmas lights geometry node setup is still pinned. So I can just like edit this mesh here if I want to maybe scale the rafters or just edit the rafters, but then I can still edit the Christmas lights because the geometry node setup is pinned. So those are some cool things about Blender that you may not have known about. So let me know in the comments if you learned something new from this video. And if you have some other cool tips and tricks that you know about Blender that many people may not know about, definitely share it with us all in the comments. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.